There we go. Uh, so let me share my screen. Let's see. Okay, guys, so um, we're gonna go through the listing process. We're gonna go through our website. We're gonna go through a couple of documents that I use uh, when I meet with sellers. And it's good that we have Rob on here because he can also chime in on a few things since he deals with a lot of sellers as well. Um, so let me go ahead and pull up some of the pages real quick. Okay, good stuff, Diana, thanks. So when you're gonna meet with sellers, guys, the main, the before you even get into what services we offer, any of that stuff, it's important that you understand the seller situation because before you can make a recommendation, you need to understand where the seller is at, what they're looking to do, what their plans are, if they're motivated, all those things. So I'm gonna point you real quick to our questionnaire. Um, let me see here. Give me one second. Let me make sure it's. One second, guys. I'm trying to pull this up. Um... Okay, so not letting me share my screen. So wait a minute, did I not make you host? Because I see PRG, so that's not you. I just have to do it to Enrique. Give me one second. Yeah, there you go. If you can do that. Who's PRG? Can you make Enrique host PRG? It's not Chris. It's not me. So who has PRG on their screen? I just did. My does. Okay, cool. Now your host. Perfect. Um, give me one second. Uh, Sorry guys, I'm on a different computer today and it's uh, acting funny right now. All right, can you guys see my screen now? Okay, perfect, there we go, I got it. Okay, so before you meet with any seller, before you make recommendations, before you start telling them how you're gonna sell their home and market their home, it's important that you understand um, their situation, right? And what you're trying to do for them. So I'm gonna point you guys to the seller uh, qualifier script, the SQS. Um, and this is basically the script that we go over when we're talking to someone on the phone, but it's also the same script that you're gonna be going through when you meet with someone in person. Um, this is in the Google Drive. So if you just type SQS, you'll be able to pull this up, but it basically goes through their motivation and timing what their plan is, you know, what's going to happen when they sell or they buying another home, where they would like to move to, um, the condition of the property, have they done any upgrades? Is there anything that needs to be fixed before selling? Uh, their mortgage situation, do they still owe money on the property? Are they using the equity from their home to buy the next one? Um, we're going through their value of their property, right? What do they think the value is? And then, of course, we can make our own recommendations when we meet with them. Uh, who the decision makers are, right? So is it husband and wife? Is it just a husband? Are there family involved? Stuff like that. Making sure that you have all the decision makers there. And then of course, from there, then you're going to go for the appointment. And you always want to know if they're interviewing other agents. This is important as well, because if they're interviewing other agents, then you can start asking, hey, well, you know, who else are you talking to? Is there anything else that they advised? And Try to make sure you guys are on the same page or see if there's anything you think might be valuable to them. And then the closing question is, if when we meet, you like everything we say, we agree upon a pricing and marketing plan, are you ready to get the process started? 
So this closing question is really just you assessing how motivated they are, what their timeline is like. Are they ready to move forward if they agree upon everything? I'm not going to spend too much time on this, guys. We've done another training on how to go through this. The reason I'm bringing this up is that you need to make sure you understand all of this information um, before you go out there and start making, making recommendations to the client, right? If you don't know where they're going, why they're moving, anything like that, and you start talking about marketing and staging and all these things we're going to do, there's going to be a complete disconnect there, right? Because the marketing and all the stuff that PRG does, it's only a small part of the equation, right? The big part of the equation is connecting with the seller, making sure you're on the same page with their plans and making sure that they see you as the person helping them get from point A to point B, right? It's much more about building rapport, much more about connecting the marketing, the cool stuff we do, the staging, how we present our listings, that's going to that's going to enhance good rapport, right? But if you don't have good rapport and you just talk about marketing and staging, everyone else is talking about that stuff, right? All every other agent they meet with is talking about how they're going to do photos and stage their property and and put it online and put it on different websites. So I want to really point that out before we go into what it is that that we offer. Let me stop quickly right there because I want to make sure we understand that part because it's it's a really crucial part. Are there any questions, comments, or feedback on maybe why it's important to make sure you're connecting with them, make sure you understand anything to that effect? Well, I will share. When I was talking to the lead today, he was a Z buyer and he was kind of like, oh, do you have a cash offer or do you have an offer? Well, then give me the offer. And I was like, well, I have like a pool of probably 3000 buyers, but I'm not sure if they want to live in San Lorenzo. I could make it worth it if I had, you know, a couple of pictures. I said, but, you know, on your property. And I was like, but tell me a little bit more, you know, because the house is a house. Like, why do you have to move? Is it because you have grandbabies you're trying to get closer to? And he's all like, I don't have to answer that question. And I said, oh, no, the only reason I ask is I know that something so small and special move a whole family because I'm pretty sure based on his age that you know that could be the situation that's what I'm running into and, and so that's it I feel like he was cool but after I asked that question I brought up the grandbabies somehow that did connect and he answered all my questions said well you need to come over and see it instead of me seeing you the pictures and blah blah so so yeah I agree with you on that yeah and you see that it's important that you did that right because a lot of agents will make the mistake of just trying to say well we can do this we can do that we can do that but if you don't know why he wants to move or what's important to him, you might be speaking a different language, right? Like there's some clients, they, they don't care about marketing, right? Like some old school clients, they don't care about marketing. They're not maybe hip on technology and the websites and all that stuff. They're, they more care about like, what's the bottom line? Like how much money are you going to get me? Or they maybe care about, well, how long is it going to take? Or they maybe care about, you know, uh, what's the easiest way to get my home sold? I don't want to deal with a bunch of people coming into my house. You know, I want to, I'd rather have an easy approach. Do you have a buyer already? So remember, if you don't ask those questions, then you won't know what sort of recommendations to advise or give to that, that seller, right? So you have to ask the questions first, understand their situation, go through that SQS whether it's on the phone, whether it's in person, when you meet with them, you need to make sure that it's really clear, hey, this is what you're trying to do, right? Um, it's like the analogy of the doctor, you know, if the doctor's giving you a prescription, but he hasn't yet gave you a diagnosis yet. He hasn't yet checked your vitals. He hasn't asked you questions. He hasn't figured out what's wrong. And he just says, hey, take, take some Vicodin, right? Without even going down his checklist of, of, you know, what's going on with you. And he just prescribes you some medicine that that's, that's not the way, you know, doctors are supposed to do it. They need to understand what's going on first, and then they can properly prescribe and give you advice. Right. So I want to drive that point home. Um, okay. So let's move on to the next part, guys. So I want to go through our website and show you guys just how I look at, you know, I use this website as a listing presentation as well, right? The reason we designed the website like this was so that you don't have to take 
a bunch of printed out listing presentations, all kinds of stuff, you can basically show them on our website and use this page as an actual listing presentation, right? To explain our services. So if you go onto our website, uh, realestateprg.com or prg-re.com, it's the same, takes you to the same place. And you click on selling, this tab that says selling, it takes you to this page. And I recently revamped it a little bit, updated some of the photos and stuff like that to make it look a little more modern. But this page is basically gonna go through the different steps, the different things that we offer. So the top part of it, guys, is just going to explain, you know, right now we're in a changing market, right? The market is changing. Inventory is higher. Interest rates are higher. There's different things that are happening in the market. So as the market changes, it's important to understand all your options. And there's going to be different options that may apply to a particular seller, depending on what's important to them. So we kind of broke down three different options right now that we're able to offer. Number one is going to be the full service sale. And if you read here, the descriptions on there for those clients who have all the traditional selling needs, this option includes home inspection, staging, design, upgrades to the property, uh, full vendor coordination, and all of the high-end marketing that PRG is known for. So this is like the whole, this is all the works, right? You have a client that need their home needs work. We're going to go in there. We're going to help them do some repairs to their property. We're going to stage it. We're going to design it. We're going to help them make recommendations on paint colors, um, all that good stuff. Do we do landscaping? Do we not do landscaping? It's going to get, you know, the full works, right? The staging, the photos, the website that we create. Uh, and I'll show you some samples of that in a second. But they get everything, right? And there's going to be certain sellers that understand and appreciate all of those things. Right. Especially if you have homes that are a little run down or they haven't done any maintenance to them in a while, you'll be able to make the biggest impact on their listing by us going in there and cleaning it up and just giving it a whole new look and and marketing it to the fullest. Right. Because now you're taking a property that maybe was at a level five or six. And you're turning it into a level eight or nine or ten, and that's going to make a dramatic difference in how many people see the property, how many people show up to the open house, all those things, right? We're, we're taking it from the ugly duckling to one of the nicest homes and, and presenting it really nice. So that's the full service sale. Are there any questions on full service sale or what full service sale means? Feel free to just unmute yourself or even drop it in the chat, guys, if you have any questions at any time. I can just say that the first listing that I got, well, this time doing real estate <laughs> is um, that seller was super impressed with, you know, the full service. I think he's still happy. He's like, that's awesome. That's great. He just loved how it turned out and all the efforts we, we've made. He really appreciates that. He was going to sell it just as is. He didn't care. He just wanted to get rid of it. So it's been on the market, I think, 15, 16 days now. Got it. And you guys got some good activity so far, right? And just imagine like if you guys didn't do any of that stuff and it was on the market, you'd probably maybe get some low ball offers. You'd probably get less activity, less people wanting to come out. So that was definitely worthwhile investing a little bit into the property and taking it from a mediocre property to now a really nice looking property, right? That's a full service sale. Now, the next one is going to be a discount fee sale. So you're always going to have those clients out there who are looking for like a cheaper cost. Or maybe they have a really nice home already that doesn't need much work. It just needs to be properly marketed. Maybe it doesn't need staging. Maybe it needs a little bit of staging. Maybe it just needs some good you know, photos. Um, it's in a good area. There's going to be certain uh, clients who want to see if they can save a little bit of money on, on commission. So this is for those clients who want to sell it as is. They don't need any repairs or upgrades. They want to sell with you know, lower cost. And they want to include all of the marketing PRG is known for. And of course, we're going to handle all the necessary documents and negotiations to net the most money possible, right? So this would be kind of like your middle, your middle ground um, sale, um, as opposed to the full service where we're going in there and giving it all the bells and whistles. This one, we're doing kind of the minimum. Give me one second. I got 
dog barking real quick. Okay. And we'll, we'll talk about commission ranges in a second, guys, but I just want to outline so you guys get a, a visual and understanding of what the different options that we have, right? Um, any questions on discount fee sale or why that's there or why that's important? Have you guys run into any clients who are looking for a discount and commission? Or maybe clients who have a nice property where it doesn't need a ton of upgrades. It doesn't need a ton of, you know, marketing and stuff like that. So what, what would you say is the biggest difference? Like, do we just not door knock the neighborhood or just not stage the house? Um, and then what's like the bare minimum, the bare minimum fee that or the lowest fee that we'll charge? Yeah, so that's a good question. So as far as us door knocking and doing all that stuff, really the door knocking and everything is more for us, right? That's for us to promote ourselves, to tap into that neighborhood. So we're always going to want to door knock and, and promote every property to market ourselves, to try to get more buyers, more sellers. Um, the discount fee is more in terms of the services that we're going to uh, offer to the client, right? Like st staging, for example, uh, for a discount fee sale, there's some homes that they already have nice furniture in them, right? Like some people, they have a good eye. Maybe they're, it's designed really nice. It, maybe it's a newer property, a new construction that was purchased, you know, four or five years ago. So the house is already in decent shape and it are, it's already, you know, furnished well, but it just maybe needs just the, the photos. It needs the, maybe some recommendations on how to organize their furniture, Maybe it's a partial staging where we just add a couple pieces of artwork where it's not a full, a full on deal. So that's going to be the difference between the discount and the full service. I would say discount fee. The other name that we can also give it could be maybe limited service, right? Where we're not doing as many services because it doesn't need it. We're not having to paint or do upgrades to the property. Now, I'll go over the commissions in a second, but I just want to make sure you guys understand the difference between those. Now, what you choose to do when you market yourself and market the property, that's totally up to you. Um, we're always going to want to market every property to the fullest because that's going to get us more clients. I, I like that change to get that, that, the full service and limited service. Yeah. That'd, that'd be a good change. Yeah, full service and limited service. Okay. Yeah, I, and I can do that. Now that I'm talking about it, um, we can maybe say lower costs in the description, but also say, you know, limited service. Uh, okay. The last one's going to be a cash offer sale, right? So cash offer sale is for those clients who uh, maybe it's a, it's a fixer upper home. Maybe it's totally beat up. Maybe they don't want to put any money into it. They just want to get rid of it. Um, sometimes they have a situation. There's going to be those clients once in a while. Uh, so it's for those clients who want a fast close, maybe a free rent back with negotiable terms. They want, it's best for homes that are distressed in need of substantial repairs or have an unforeseen circumstance that requires a quick sale. We work with cash buyers. Uh, Jason and I, you know, buy homes also on occasion if it's a, a good deal. We have a ton of investors and flippers that we work with as well that will buy a property that needs to be, you know, fixed up and flipped. And some clients just don't want to deal with it. They just don't want to deal with the hassle. And they are, they do understand that by them not doing anything, they are going to make less. But for them, it will be easier if they could just get it off their hands and just get it done quick. Where you'll see this is common is like, let's say um, there was a death in the family or something and the property was inherited, right? So let's say you inherited a property, it's all beat up and you just don't want to deal with it. You just want to sell it and get it off your hands and you know distribute the the money to whoever's involved that happens um maybe maybe it's a bankruptcy situation maybe the home just has so many you know repairs foundation issues roof issues and the seller just doesn't want to deal with it maybe it was a rental property right that they just want to get off their hands as well so there's just, there's going to be different situations where someone might want to uh just off, uh, unload the property and, and take less and get it done quicker. Um, and a cash offer is going to solve that, right? Maybe it's not financeable. That's the other thing too. Some properties could be so beat up where the bank won't lend you money on the property because 
you know, it's, it's all beat up, right? So you can't get financing. So you can only take a cash offer and that will come with a discount on the price. Now, so does everyone understand the cash offer situation? Anybody have questions on that one? So the important thing for you guys to understand with this is just to know that there's different options. That's the important thing, right? Um, it's not a one size fits all because every situation is different. And that's where I go back to that questionnaire of you having to make sure you go through those proper questions and figure out what's important to them and what is it that they need to do. So if you ask those questions, then the seller will tell you more or less what's important that more what's important to them and what they want. There's always going to be two factors, right? It's going to be time and money, right? Because a full service sale will take more time because we got to do a lot more work to the property. But the goal should be that it can net them more money. A cash offer sale can get done a lot quicker, right? You can get it sold in a week or less if you have a cash buyer, but you're probably going to get less money on the property. So time and money are always the two factors that we're kind of juggling. And that's why you ask the, the seller the question, hey, what's important to you? Is it important to you to get the most? Is it important to you to just uh, get it off your hands and get it done quicker? Um, are you willing to go through these extra steps to net more money you know, from the sale? If so, you know, this is what we can recommend. So once you know their situation, then you can start kind of pointing them to the different options and seeing which one's going to fit best for them. Now, uh, when you guys asked about commissions, so let's talk about that. So full service sale, guys, is always going to be, it's going to be highest to lowest, right? From full service, the commissions are the highest. To cash offer, it's probably going to be the lowest, right? And in between. I would say for full service, we're seeing anywhere from 5% to 7% commission. Um, some of the factors that will come into play is going to be also the price point, right? Um, if it's a $1 million property, you know, versus a $3 million property, those extra percentages are going to make a big difference, right? Of course, for us, we always want to sell, you know, we always want to try to make the most commission, obviously, right? We want to make sure that we get our, we get paid what we're worth. We want to make sure that we have enough money um, on the table to be able to cover these costs as well, because they do come from the commission, anything that we pay for. Um, but I would say five to 7%, most commonly, I would I would sell you know six percent a lot um, on full service sales where we would include everything. Um, once in a while, I'd go a little bit lower if it was like a higher priced home. Um, maybe go you know five and a half, and then sometimes you got to go down to five if you're if you're competing with multiple agents. And that's the other thing too, where it's important to ask. Um, are they interviewing other agents, right? Who else are they talking to? Um, because there's gonna be certain agents that may be dis offering a lot of the same services, but at a lower price, just because they're trying to compete, right? So anytime you're going up against other agents, more than likely you might have to budge a little bit on, on the commission. So there's no one, one size, you know, one commission, but I would say it's the range of maybe five to 7%. Um, on the full service side. On the discount fee in the middle, you're probably looking anywhere from like four to five. I've seen somewhere four to 5%, um, whereas two and a half percent goes always to the buyer side. And then whatever's left. So if we charge 5%, two and a half goes to the buyer side, two and a half goes to our side. Um, if we charge four and a half or four, right? But remember, you're also not, we're not paying for a bunch of these costs as well. So it does balance out, right? Even if we charge 5%, but we're not paying for inspections, we're not paying for staging, we're not doing all those things. Um, there's less cost, right? So there's more profit on the table in that deal, even at a lower commission split. So this is where you guys need to understand also how to crunch the numbers, right? You need to understand, hey, on a million dollar property, if we're charging 5% and the buyer gets two and a half and we get two and a half, that's two and a half percent of a million. That's a $25,000 gross commission. And then what costs are we going to have on this deal? Are we offering to pay for staging? Are we offering to pay for photos and marketing, which can be, you know, several thousand dollars, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, depending on the size of the property. 
you got to factor in those costs in, into your commission. Um, on the cash offer sale, guys, that's going to be negotiable. Sometimes uh, it just depends. Sometimes the if we have a cash buyer, sometimes the cash buyer may be willing to cover the commission so that it's it's less cost for the seller and it makes the deal work because they're already getting a lower price. Um, sometimes maybe we're only going to charge them, you know, instead of charging them uh, 5%, we might only charge them 2.5% because we already have the seller and the buyer, right? We're not having to put the property on the market. We already, we're just bringing the cash buyer to the table, right? So it's also less work on our end and it's also less cost that we have on our end as well. So I would say just to summarize, uh, you know, to you know, recap again, full service, you're probably looking at anywhere from five to seven percent discount. Maybe you're going to be four to five, and then cash offer sale, you'll probably be anywhere from zero to four, right? Now remember, um, I just want to point out that cash offer when. If we're not charging the client anything, that doesn't mean we're not going to make any money. We're going to work that in somewhere, whether we're passing that cost off to the, the buyer, if it's an investor, um, where we've done deals like that, where we have a cash, uh, a fixer upper house, we bring the investor in, they buy the house, and then the investor pays us a 3% commission, and it comes out of the investor's pocket. It doesn't come from the seller. Okay, so I'm going to stop right there because uh, I want to make sure that I don't lose anybody right here because I know this is a lot of stuff. What questions do you have? And Hervin also wrote, we don't quote anything over the phone, right? Only in person. Um, yeah, Hervin. So you definitely want to stay away from quoting over the phone. Um, sometimes you have to give a range, but, you know, just to get someone to move forward, at least want to meet with you because everyone, a lot of times the, the seller is going to say, Hey, what's the, What's the commission? What's the commission? I don't want to meet with you unless you tell me what your commission is. So that's where you have to learn how to handle that conversation, right? It's an objection handler. What I would say is, hey, uh, Mr. Customer, it sounds like costs are important to you. And at the end of the day, it sounds like making the most money from the property is important to you, walking away with the most money. Is that correct? Uh, and they're going to say yes, nine times out of 10. Awesome. We're on the same page. The great thing is that our commissions are negotiable right? Everything is negotiable. And the approach that we like to do is we like to come out there and we like to see what you're working with, what you're looking for. And I have several options for you with different commission ranges, anywhere from 0% all the way up to 7%, right? Um, but I don't want to quote you anything because I don't know exactly what we're working on. I don't know exactly what you're looking for. When I come out there, we'll be able to custom tailor a plan that you that you think is good for you, that that works with your your cost that you want to, you know, take on. And then you just go on to like, Hey, let's go ahead and meet and let's go ahead and talk about that in person. So you're always kind of deflecting, you're acknowledging it. You're telling them it's important, but then you're going to, you're going to deflect to, Hey, let's go meet in person. And we'll go through that in person. Uh, Brenda said, are the home inspection staging upgrades, a closing cost of the seller, but is the cost is put up front by the commission. Okay. Good question. So um, it depends. So that's all negotiable, Brenda. So Brenda was asking if the home inspection, staging, and upgrades, is that a cost to the seller? It depends on which package, right? So like when we do our full service package, the full service sale, we typically include the home inspection, the staging, um, and any marketing stuff, we include that. We pay for that from our commission. So it's part of our package. Like, hey, for example, we're going to charge you 6%. And that 6%, we're going to include staging, we're going to include home inspections, we're going to include um, all the marketing, the websites, the videos, and all that stuff. The only thing that we don't really pay for, guys, on any of these options is going to be upgrades to the property. Because upgrades can range, right? Like that can be all over the place, depending on what the client wants to do. We will help them coordinate, right? If they use our vendors, we will help them manage the project. We will, um, our, our guys, if they use any of our preferred um, contractors, they could even um, pay at the close of escrow, right? So they'll go in there and they'll do maybe paint, carpet, get their property ready. And then when the house sells, then they can charge them at that point. And they'll usually work something out with the, with the seller, right? So 
Um, we don't want to be responsible for the seller's upgrades because if the seller decides they want to redo their whole entire kitchen, it's $40,000. Like that's not a cost that we can bear. Right. So we want to make sure that it's going to be up to them and we'll help them decide and pick and choose what makes the most sense so that they get the best return on investment. Okay. Any other questions guys, before I move on to the next part? Uh, Liliana, what's considered a cosmetic upgrade? Great question. Um, I would say things like paint, carpet, you know, basic landscaping, um, repainting the cabinets. You know, we do that a lot in the kitchens and stuff like that. Changing out hardware, changing out light bulbs. You know, those are all kind of basic cosmetic stuff where you're, you're just making it look nicer. Um, that would be more of a cosmetic upgrade. Uh, when you're starting to get into remodeling is more if you're like ripping stuff out and replacing it new. So like if you're ripping the bathroom out and putting a brand new bathroom in there, brand new sink, brand new cabinets, brand new faucets, all that stuff. That's more of like now uh, that's a more of, of an in-depth remodel. And we do do that. Like we, we do that for clients. Um, but there's a difference between just doing like some simple upgrades just to make it look nicer versus doing some renovations or remodeling. Right. Okay, so this next part of the page, guys, I listed, I put here just some of our listing specialists. These are some of the agents on our team that have more experience with listings. That doesn't mean that you guys can't become a listing specialist. That doesn't mean that you guys can't, you know, work your way up. Uh, I just thought it'd be cool to feature some of the agents on our team who have done a lot of listings. Uh, so like myself, Rob, Blanca, even Thomas Fang has done um, a good amount of listings. So I mentioned them on there. Uh, this next part of it, get connected. This is more just like a lead capture. So the client can um, come on here. They can book a call. So if they click on this, it'll go to a Calendly page and they can book an actual call because I'm going to be using this page to market as well. So if we get people that when we drive traffic to our website, if they're interested in selling or doing a discovery call, um, then they can book a time with us. Now, I want you guys to see how I wrote this because this is how you frame the conversation as well when you're trying to book an appointment with someone, right? Book a home selling discovery call at the link below. One of our experienced home selling specialists will get in touch. During the call, we will discuss your home selling plans, review the different options. Our call will be extremely informative and we will go over any recommendations for next steps. We look forward to speaking with you. But think about that. That's the same thing that you would tell someone if you wanted to come out to their house, right? Like, hey, when I come out to your house, we're gonna discuss your plans. We're gonna take a look at your property. We're going to go over the different options. It's going to be really informative. And we're going to give you recommendations on the best option for you, you know, to help you get the most money, get it done the smoothest, or get you, you know, from San Jose to wherever you're moving to. But what I want to point out, guys, is that the verbiage, it's, it's the same thing, right? Whether you're booking a call with someone or you're booking an appointment to come meet them, it's really going to be like an informative consultation where you're coming out there, you're understanding their situation, and you're going to make recommendations based off what they need. It's important to frame, frame it like that, right? And say it in that manner. Okay. So the second part, guys, of, our, of this page right here is going to now go into examples of what we do, right? So the top part of it gives you, like, tells you the different options now we're going to actually show you some of the marketing. So I broke down full service sale right here. And these are basically the three different steps to a full service sale. So step number one is home preparation. And this is where we're going to do any upgrades or repair recommendations, right? So we come into the property, we look at it, we say, okay, hey, based off, you know, the condition, I think it'd be best for you to paint. I think it'd be best for you to maybe fix this leaky faucet do this landscaping, stage it. We're going to give them recommendations. Um, and then we'll be, we'll be able to coordinate the repairs for them. If they use our vendor or if they have an outside person that they want to use, we're going to be helping them uh, coordinate that, right? We'll go to the property. We'll check on it. We'll be in touch with the vendor. We'll make sure that we help project manage so that we get the, the job done. We're also going to do the property and termite inspections as well right? Because we want to know exactly what's going on with the property, what's on the inspection reports. 
Um, and if there's anything on there that we think we should fix before we put it on the market, then we might as well have our contractor fix it so that we avoid any sort of negotiations later or any red flags on the property. Um, we'll do interior design and property staging. So this is where we'll bring the stager out. The stager will make recommendations, whether we're going to use the client's furniture or whether it's a vacant property and we're just going to fully stage the property. That will all be worked out when our stager comes out and our stager will give recommendations. We've had properties where the client's still living there and our stager will come in and say, hey, I need you to take all this stuff off the walls. I need you to move all these things out. Just leave this couch, just leave this table. And then I'll come and add the rest. I'll add the artwork, I'll add the decorations, but we wanna take some of your personal stuff. And that's what we do like a, a staging consultation. So this way the client can still live there while the property is being sold. And then any repair costs paid at close of escrow, right? So this is another uh, benefit is if they work with our vendor, our vendor a lot of times can take those costs to the close of escrow. So essentially their property is being prepped, staged, the upgrades are happening, and then the client doesn't have to pay for those up front. They get the benefits of selling their home for more, selling it faster, making it more desirable. And then at the end, when they sell the home, those costs come out of the sale. So it's really a win-win for the client. Any questions on the home prep part, guys? Feel free to stop me at any time or throw some questions in the chat. Um, okay, so the next part is the strategic marketing, right? So now these are the things that we do when we market a property. So professional photography and video, right? If it's a, if it's a really nice home, then we'll pay extra and we'll do video on it. We're definitely going to do the professional photography. We do the, um, the 3D tours, and I'll show you an example of what we do in a second. But we have we use really good photographers. Uh, they go out there. It's all super high quality stuff. The photos look really good. They edit the photos. They make they enhance them, make them pop out. We do our online marketing campaigns. We send email blasts to people. We promote it on social media. You guys see the stuff that um, DJ you know gives us. Just listed all those different things that we're able to promote on social media. Um, I'll get to your question in a sec, Hervin. Uh, dedicated property website. So we do a custom website. That's also part of our service. So it'll be like 123mainstreet.com and on there, all the photos will be on there, the video, the website, um, the description, the 3D tour. And I'll show you a sample right now of what that looks like. Um, high quality brochures, right? That's what we're doing flyers, whether we're going to go door knock them or we're doing flyers for the property. We'll print out some nice brochures for them. And then we do our mega open houses and broker tours, right? Where we're doing our open houses on the weekends. We're doing twilights, you know, and obviously we're going to, we're going to pick and choose depending on the property, the neighborhood and stuff like that. Some of them, we might go a little bit more. Some of them we got might go a little bit less depending on the property. Um, the last part is going to be the pricing and negotiation. So this is now where we're going to, we're going to meet with the client before we put the house in the market we're gonna go through a strategic pricing strategy, right? This is where we're gonna analyze what the market's doing, what homes have sold in the neighborhood, what other homes are currently on the market, um, what the trends are, and we're gonna come up with the pricing strategy. Do we price higher? Do we price right at market value? Do we price a little bit lower to drive traffic? This is where it's an actual strategy. It's not just us just throwing a price out of thin air. We're actually doing some, some studying and seeing what the best, you know, what the recommendation would be so that we get the most um, traffic and we get the property sold the fastest. Um, then once the offers come in, this is where we're now going to review all the offers, especially when we have multiple offers. We're going to go check all of them out. We're going to look at the terms. We're going to look at who the agent is. Um, we're going to check out the buyer, see what you know how strong they are. We're going to call their lender. And then we're going to negotiate so that we can reach the best terms for the client, whether we got to do counter offers, multiple counter offers. Um, we're always trying to get the best price and the best terms for the client. Um, this right here, multi-step buyer and AG, agent vetting. So this is part of what I just talked about, right? So we always want to look up the agent as well. Like who's the other agent? Are they an experienced agent? Have they, you know, whoever brings the buyer, right? Have they sold a lot of homes? What's their track record like? What company do they work for? What team are they on? Are they, you know, reputable people? 
because that's also important. If we accept an offer from an agent, we want to make sure that it goes to the finish line. We want to make sure that their agent is doing a good job and representing their client well, so that's a smoother process. And then we have our transaction coordinator. You guys know Melissa, our TC. And then we also have our admin team, Andrea, Alicia on the back end, who are helping coordinate everything, right? From the prep to the marketing to once it's an offer is accepted, they're helping coordinate all the paperwork, all the disclosures, all that stuff, so that we can um, get the home sold smoothly, right? And all the escrow guidance and closing, right? So we'll work with our title company, um, basically to take it to the finish line, get all the necessary paperwork done and get the deal closed. So this right here, guys, this is pretty much breaking down the full service sale into three phases, right? The home prep, the marketing, and the pricing and negotiation. It's important that you guys study this and you guys know how to find this information on our website, because just like I explained it right now, where I'm just going line by line and just explaining it, that's exactly what I do when I meet with the seller. The same way you do your buyer consultation, where you have your buyer consultation pulled up and you're kind of just going through the bullet points and then you're explaining it in your own words. It's the same exact thing, guys. That's why we made this website this easy, where you can just go down the line and explain it. And it does a lot of the selling for you. Uh, any questions, guys? Type them in the chat if you have any questions. Hervin asked, what happens if the home does not sell? Who pays that cost? That's a great question. So that's all going to be negotiable, guys. Um, typically, what we tell our, our clients is like upgrades, for example, if they remodeled their whole property and they have they owe our, our contractor money, well, they're going to be responsible for that, right? They're going to have to pay our contractor. It's not for free. Um, if there's staging or photos or anything that we've done and we decide not to do it, a lot of times we take the hit on those things right? We take the hit unless we work that out with the client up front. And this is why it's important that before you move forward with the client, you make sure that they're motivated. You make sure that they fully understand, you know, what we're looking to do. You make sure that the, uh, their expectations on the price, right, is realistic. We do all of those things. We do the whole qualifying thing before we start spending money on these things, because we don't want to get in a situation where we just took on a, a listing and it wasn't realistic and we spend money and it doesn't sell and the client changes their mind, right? So I always like to tell my clients like, hey, look, you know, if for some reason you change your mind, like you just, just decide I don't want to sell anymore and we've paid all these costs, you know, then we're going to have to work something out. We do expect to be reimbursed, right? I usually tell that to them because let's say the client put their property on the market, right? They were deciding that they're going to sell the, the property. Maybe they're relocating to a new job or relocating out of state. And they said, yeah, we're going to sell. We're ready to go. Everything's all good. We staged their home. We did all these things. And then all of a sudden they say, hey, you know what? We're not moving after all. We didn't get the job. Right? That's not our fault, right? That's, that's something that happened with their situation. So in that case, we would expect you know, the client to reimburse us. And that's why you want to kind of have that understanding up front. Now, that's one scenario. Let's say a different scenario where we went in there, the client's ready to sell. We went over everything. We, they committed, they, they made everything happen. And we just couldn't sell the property at a price that made sense. Maybe the market dropped or maybe, um, you know, we told them we were going to get them $2 million and we were only getting them 1.5 million. I mean, that's kind of on us as well, right? If there's a big gap where it just doesn't make sense and we promise them something, um, we're probably going to take the hit for that or we're probably going to maybe take some of the hit for that, right? Maybe we work it out with them or maybe they pay half the cost or something like that. So that's why it's very important that when we're going over pricing and we're setting expectations, it's realistic and we're all on the same page. Um, Enrique, I mean, yes. it's not common. It's not common that that happens that we have to come out of pocket. But I think that's why the, you can see there is a select few of agents that kind of do this process right now that, that are the listing specialists is because, you know, we expect them to have you know a level of expertise on you know what we can sell a property for 
because both of us are going to be vested, right? The, the, our PRG team is going to be vested and also the seller. So we want to make sure that we protect both sides and both of our investments. Correct. And that's, that's absolutely correct. I've sold hundreds of homes, right, where I've represented sellers in my career. And the times where we've had to take a hit for the cost is probably less than a handful, right? In 19 years of doing real estate and selling hundreds of properties, it's less than a handful of times where we've had to take a hit on something, right? And that's because we do a very thorough process of uh, consulting the client, understanding their needs, making sure we're realistic, making sure we're on the same page, giving them a, a range. When we tell them a price also, I don't say I'm going to sell it for $2 million. I say, hey, I don't make myself responsible for the price. I say, hey, the market is telling us that homes are selling for $1.8 to $2.1 million in your neighborhood, right? We're going to try to push it as high as possible, but just know that there are homes that have sold as low as this and homes that have sold as high as this, and we're probably somewhere in that ballpark. And we usually want to look at worst case scenario. Worst case scenario, if we're on the lower end, can you still make the sale happen? Does that still allow you to get from point A to point B, right? And these, this dialogue that I'm saying right now, I say that in my listing presentation right? We have these conversations because the last thing like we don't want to do is take on a sale and we have to eat $5,000 worth of marketing, right? Because um, because we're going to have to work that out with whoever the agents are on the deal as well, right? We're not just, we're all going to take a hit basically. So it's important that we go in and we're, we're really, uh, we're realistic. And the way you think about it, guys, is just think about this, like whatever the marketing costs, just pretend that was your money you're spending. You're about to put up five grand to pay for someone's staging and their photos and all that. What sort of homework would you do or what sort of understanding would you want to have with the seller before you just gave a $5,000 check with no guarantee, right? You would want to go through all the questions. You would want to you know, double check everything before you commit to doing something like that, right? So you just need to have that mentality. It's very simple, right? Just act as if you're spending your own money and it's not a guarantee that you're going to get it back. So you want to be very calculated and you want to take calculated risk when you're, when you're putting up money for marketing and all that stuff. Um, okay. And then when you go below guys, if you go down, you scroll down. Now I just have samples of our marketing. So the, if you click on this one, this is a property tour video. And I'll play this in, at the listing appointment. Hi there. My name is Blanca Medellin with EXP Realty. I'm inviting you to my newest listing at 3167 Todd Way in the beautiful Cambrian area. Let's take a look. Follow me. All right. So see, so I have some samples of videos that we've done, right? And when you're in the listing presentation, how cool is that, right? Where you're going through, hey, let me show you a sample of a video that we just did for a property. You hit play, you bring that up on your computer screen, just like I did right now. And you let the first, you know, 15 seconds play or whatever, right? Um, so this is why you use these videos that we've done as showing samples of your marketing and how you market properties. So imagine you do that and then they interview some other agent who doesn't show them any of this stuff, doesn't have a website, doesn't go through this process, doesn't break it all down thoroughly, doesn't break each step down, doesn't show them the marketing. You're already light years above that, that agent, right? So that's why this website right here, guys, that this page that we built, you need to memorize this front and back and this becomes your best friend right here. You use this to really showcase all the things that we do. There's a video here that I did of several years back where I went through the whole process from prepping a home to remodeling it, to uh, getting it on the market. This was a home in Evergreen. Um, hey, what's up guys? Enrique Medellin, PRG Real Estate. My team and I sell real estate here in the Silicon Valley and Bay Area. Um, I'm here at my new listing here in Evergreen, and we're gonna be giving you a behind the scenes look at what we do to prepare homes for sale. Our crew is actually here. They're already working on the property. So I'm gonna give I'm gonna show you what they're doing. Uh, Evergreen's actually a great neighborhood. It's known for its beautiful views of the hills, the city. There's award-winning schools in the area, and there's a great sense of community here, guys. So come on in, let's take a look. 
Mm -hmm. So guys, the great thing about this house is it actually has a really nice floor plan. It has huge vaulted ceilings, but it's just a little outdated. So the first thing we're doing is we're removing the popcorn from the ceiling and giving it. All right, guys. So check that video out. But even though that's me on the video, that doesn't mean that you can't show that in your presentation. You say, hey, this is this is my my business partner. This is a video that we did for a property that we sold, right? And it shows them the whole process of how we upgraded the property and takes them from start to finish. Then right here, we want to show them our photography, right? So there's if you just click on one of these photos, it'll pop up. So I want to show people the difference between our photos and other competitors out there, right? Twilight photos, really enhanced photography. These are actual photos of properties that we've sold. And you see how we just do them really nice, really crisp, really clear, super high definition, right? They look like magazine quality stuff. But this is important, guys, that it's important that you explain the difference because if you just say, hey, we do photos, but you don't actually show them the difference between your photos and other people's photos, then all it sounds like is, oh, you do photos? Oh, that other guy does photos too, right? So you need to show people why your photos are better, right? How we pay more. We pay for higher end photographers. They... Photoshop, right? They edit them, they make them bright, they make them crisp so that when they're online on Zillow, on Redfin, our photos stand out. If our photos are nicer, then people are more likely to click, right? And you see how we stage our properties. So this is where you want to go into depth. So when I'm on the listing presentation, I'm actually doing what I'm doing right now. I click on them and I go through each one and I explain it the exact way that I'm explaining to you right now. Then I'll show them like a property website. So if you click on this, it'll take you to a property website. So this is one, uh, this is Maori and Rob's listing, Desertwood, right? So now I'm showing them a sample website. So, hey, when you, uh, when you work with us, Mr. Customer, we're going to do a custom website for you um, where we can drive traffic to. We can promote this on social media. We can promote this online. And it's going to show, it's, a, it's your own personal website that talks about your property. It gives a description. It has all the photos that we've taken. It has a virtual tour, right? Where you can go into the, the 3D and I, I click on it and then I actually start walking through it, right? I'll start walking through the rooms and I'll show them, look, this is a prop. This is what we're going to do for your property. The same way I'm showing it to you now, guys, and I'm just walking through the room. I do this on the appointment, right? And then it'll feature our listing agents on the bottom. Um, okay, back here, right? So I'll show them a sample. I showed them 3D tour already. I show them samples of our flyers. So this is like a flyer we can do for a property, print marketing. And then I go down to showing them uh, social media campaigns, right? So these are social media posts that we'll do just listed coming soon, wine and cheese. Um, and that's pretty much it, guys, for our selling page. So the selling page is where you're showing them all the features, all the benefits, the different options that we have and walking them through that process. All right, let's open it up for questions, guys. We're coming to an end right now. What questions do you have? Questions, comments, feedback. What did you learn today? Just take a couple minutes and then we'll wrap up. This is the number one question, guys, that I get. And you guys are totally quiet today. Let's go. Let's just, it's, I know you guys have some questions because you guys always ask me about, about this side of it. So this is a time to get out of your comfort zone and then start and then help other people as well with the questions that you may have. Um, maybe my question to you, who in here feels a little more confident now, now that I've gone through this with you and you see like where this page is at, who feels like, oh, okay. I didn't know we had that page on our website or now I'm a little more confident. We're now. If I just study this, I can now, you know, after a while, I'll get the hang of it and I can go out there and, and explain it to a seller, All right? And that's the main thing, guys, is if you see the way that we design a lot of the systems and processes on our team is we try to make them where they're duplicatable, right? Where it's it, all you got to do is master it and learn it. And then you can go out there and deploy it, right? We're not doing it 10 different ways, right? Maybe there's some little variations. Rob might add a couple little things that he does. Um, but the fundamentals, guys, is the same, right? 
the fundamentals of how Rob does it, of how Blanca does it, how I do it, it's the same. They might add their own little special twist or their own flavor to it, but they're working with the same, the same uh, outline, the same steps. They're covering the same things, right? So this right here is now a way that it's a uniform way where just like you mastered the buyer presentation, if you already got the buyer presentation mastered and you feel comfortable working with buyers and you got that part down, you now need to spend time learning this part of the business. You need to master this selling page as if it's your buyer presentation. This is now your listing presentation, right? And you need to master those two documents, the seller SQS, master being able to ask those questions and go through them, and then master being able to go take someone through our uh, selling page and explain it all to them in, in person. And it's a lot of it is self-explanatory, right? You're not having to necessarily reinvent the wheel because if you just go line by line and you elaborate on certain points, it's all mapped out for you, right? So I think that's the big, the big point that I want to drive home to you guys is we're, we're taking the guesswork out of it for you by laying it out this way, right? Just learn, just save that page on your favorites. It's on our website and just memorize it. Go through each tab, read line for line. Oh, click every single image, every single video, watch them, play around with them, get to know it, right? Because now when you do that, you'll be able to now go in front of a client and have that much more confidence to just go through, you know, through that stuff and explain it to them. Um, any last minute questions, guys, before we wrap up? Can you do a training on pricing strategy? Yep, definitely. Pricing strategy will be a whole nother training. And that's going to be more where we go in depth into looking at comps and, and stuff like that. Um, and what I want you guys to see is, is, is the big difference with, with listings and buyers, right? As you guys can see, listings, you're explaining a lot more of the benefits. You're advising people on what things they should do to their property. You're You're selling commissions to them. You're advising them on what price, you know, they should list their property at. Um, there's a lot more project management, right? You need to have, to be an expert, you're going to want to have a basic understanding of, you know, cosmetic upgrades to a property, what stuff is valuable, right? So that's, that's another good exercise, guys, is to get familiar with what things make a property stand out, right? A lot of times, you know, paint, carpet, flooring, you know, updated kitchens, bathrooms, like those are all things that make a property stand out. Think about when you go tour a home with the buyer, what are things that stand out to the buyer, right? Now, when you're working with the seller, you're now on the opposite end of the spectrum. You're thinking, okay, what should we do to this property so that when the buyer walks in, it stands out to the buyer, right? So take your knowledge from working with buyers and now apply that to what do we need to do and how that would apply to my seller, right? And it's the same stuff, right? Like when you walk into a property with, uh, with a, a buyer, pay attention to the comments that they make. Oh, this is a really nice kitchen. Oh, look at the cabinets. Oh, I like the paint color, right? Oh, the backyard's really cute, right? Or, oh, I love the furniture. I love how it looks. Like all these little things, those are things that you would want people to say about your listing, right? And you need to be able to explain that and convey that to the seller when you're meeting with them. And here's the thing, guys, is I'm going to end with this. A lot of times transitioning from working with buyers to listings can be difficult because there's a lack of confidence, right? But if you've worked with a lot of buyers, you now have a lot of experience that can translate over to the seller side right? Because you can now say, hey, look, I've worked with X amount of buyers. I helped X amount of buyers last year. And this is what buyers are looking for, right? This is what the buyers typically say when I show homes. This is why I'm giving you this advice, right? Or this is how we can make it more attractive to buyers so that when they walk in, they want to put an offer on your property. They want to give you top dollar, right? These are things that we're taking a buyer's perspective and we're going to use that to our advantage when we're marketing your property. Right. So if you've only worked with mainly buyers, 
use that as a superpower that you have all this experience with buyers so that you can now advise your sellers on what buyers want. Uh, okay, guys, I'm going to end with that. Hopefully you guys got some value today. Your homework now is study this page, right? I'm giving you the overview. You guys now to go study this page, save it, find it, memorize it, look through it, learn this like the back of your hand. And you'll be that much more equipped to book listing appointments and to go out there and talk to sellers. All right, guys, we'll see you later. Let me know if you need anything. Thank you.